excited that Rocket Racing has come so far uh, since we last spoke. Uh, today's announcements with the acquisition of Velocity and how we're going to apply our technology, the rocket racers, to that to make that a, a safer aircraft for general aviation and then share those technologies with the industry is exciting. Uh, the first flight of the rocket racer we showed today and the first exhibition race at Oshkosh I think is wonderful for the industry. It's, we're excited and honored to be at Oshkosh and Reno and uh, we look forward to putting on a show there. Um, my background and, and my partners in IndyCar and the industry as a whole and Formula One has done a tremendous amount to build speed, excitement and safety into their vehicles. And uh, it is about winning at the end of the day. This is a racing competition in the Rocket Racing League. And we can very much can apply that technology, those methodologies, whether they're manufacturing, how you look at you know, crash testing, how you look at design to make something faster and better, using the greatest aerospace minds, some of whom spoke today, some of the greatest racing minds, uh, not me, but uh, great engineers, to build a wonderful sport uh, that has great benefits to everybody else. Rocket racing technology development is looking at avionics and different types of uh, systems that we can implement in our racers to make it funner for the viewer, funner for the gamer at home to, enter, to, to play along, but also what we can build into the safety aspects that we can put into velocity aircraft and other uh, general aviation and possibly commercial aviation someday with our racetrack in the sky and, and the further development of highway in the sky the ballistic recovery systems, et cetera. There's a lot of different technologies that if we look at it and use a test bed, a sandbox like the Rocket Racing League to test these technologies and start applying them to general aviation, uh, we believe we'll be selling that technology to other aircraft companies, suborbital companies, space companies, and possibly automotive or other industries. So there's a big business that underlies Rocket Racing Inc. and what you today know as Rocket Racing League, which is just part of it. Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. The, the IndyCar crashes, Formula One, NASCAR, if you've seen the technology advancements just in the last five to ten years that have been made, really, are huge. And we now have the technology, we understand the process and the methodology of how to look at, test, and apply those metrics to general aviation. And I don't think anyone's ever really done that day one. I know people have tried to do parts of it, but with 20 G seats out there, different cockpit reinforcement, different breakup patterns to an aircraft, and how you design that into the aircraft when you're designing it are key. Different uh, ways to take the workload off a pilot. And for the passengers, it's key. How do you make it safer for the passenger? So I think it happened very quickly, and we're going to be asking some of those companies out there, who I just mentioned and others, to join us in this as we're designing our aircraft for rocket racers and, and then for velocity as well. All of our aircraft will be VRS ready. All the channeling will be in, all the tethers in. If the, if the customer wants it, we put the parachute in and it's in. We'll be doing a lot of other things with cameras, infrared cameras for the flight services and other things to make the awareness for the pilot more readily available. And that can be done today. There's no reason why, just like OnStar is in, in cars, why you can't put a similar system in general aviation aircraft, which we have filed our patents for today and different technologies and ways we're doing that. So that it can tell you when you need fuel, when you need uh, to change your oil, when you have different systems that may be a little bit off in your plane, or if you're up in the air and you have a problem, you can hit a button and it'll patch you through to the velocity operator. You can't grab your book in time. I'm having this problem. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Hit the button, yep. okay, in flight and get the information. Why can't everybody do that? Why doesn't every flex jet, everybody out there have something like that? Because you can't always have everything right at your hand. You can't always be prepared for what can happen in flight. But you can always push a button and get help. And we, we're going to bring that to the pilots and to the passengers. Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you.
We're delighted to have Velocity as part of our family now. Uh, they've done a great job building a great reputation. They have a wonderful safety record and a great staff. We, we, we bought the company whole. We're keeping every employee, Dwayne Swing, Scott Swing, Scott Baker, everyone's staying intact. Back to the business model, you know, if you're going to race Ferraris in Formula One, mm -hmm. well, own the company, you sell to the general public. Right. So, you know, that was really my philosophy as part of that acquisition was, well, if we're going to race them, we might as well build them for general public and own the company. And when I spoke to Tom back in, in December, early January, and I introduced the idea to him, I said, Tom, I really want to bring the old together with the new. And this is the best place to do it. This is EAA, this is Oshkosh, this is the home of aviation, and we want to race with you, you know, there with you. And he was very inviting. He was thrilled, actually. People were like, well, that's really not Tom's personality. <laughs> he was so excited about it. And, and with Elise and Adam Smith and his whole staff, for months we've been putting this together. And how we're going to do it, what we're going to do there, we'll be at Aeroshell Square with a 100-foot tent. We'll have velocities there, rocket racers there. But I'm excited about it. You know, we're going to try to do a very safe, fun flight, a couple flights there, mm -hmm. and, uh, and have a lot of fun and really excite the crowds and, and go on to Reno. That's another wonderful thing for us, Reno. And, and uh, I mean, if you're going to do it, Jim, like I say, do it, right? So uh, that's what we're doing.